Hey, what's going on guys? All right, so this week we got the middle machine from the trailer that you guys saw. We've had it on the bench, it's been in the shop. The start stop switch, kill switch, was rewired. We hardwired it to the pigtail with one of the switches that we'd gotten online that had the wrong end. Tested it, it all works. The headlight's not wired correctly. It you get a low beam when it's off, so I have to, we have to recheck that. But for start and stop, everything works. We put a new carburetor on it. Hooked it up some, to some fuel. Everything in the electrical system minus the headlight worked. It cranked over. It started. It ran for, what, 30 seconds? I would give it about 60 seconds. 60 seconds. And then... It stopped running. We did a compression test. We found 50 PSI. Put some oil in the jug. That 50 PSI went up to 70 PSI. So, here on the bench, we've got a new jug. We've got a new piston, rings, gaskets, spark plug. Got the works. All right, so we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna set the rings on this guy. Now when you do the oil ring, if you notice... Okay, so you got the ends here. When you're doing the oil ring, you wanna make sure that they butt up to each other, that they don't overlap. We don't want any overlapping on the rings. We want them buttoned up. Yeah. <laughs> Butt those rings up. But, okay. So now if you look here, the oil ring's inserted. You see how there's that gap there? And then they touch. They're gonna butt up to each other. They're not gonna overlap, and that's what we're looking for. Sweet. You don't want the gap right over the wrist pin. I'm going to put it just off of where the wrist pin goes. So we know where the gap is. I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. It's right there. And there's where the wrist pin is. Yep. She fits. She doesn't feel like she's gonna bind either. You take the jug and you put the ring on the top of the jug. I thought you put the ring on the finger. Yeah, you put the ring on the finger. We're gonna get the specs for what it is so that we can do it the right way. Do it the right way. But we're that's not, that's something I wouldn't want to do just for testing purposes. No. And I'm just going to bring it there. All right, so I just pulled the feeler gauge out and I measured the ring gap and I got 0.254 millimeters or 10 thousandths of an inch, which according to the Yamaha book, the ring gap is between 0.15 and 0.30 millimeters, dragging just a little bit perfectly within spec. Cool. All right, just like you guys saw in the time lapse I just showed, uh, I put the top two rings on the piston. Could have used a piston spreader tool, a gap spreader, but with this piston, it's small enough and the rings didn't have that much torque on them to spread them out. So now I'm gonna check the gap on the rings. For the bottom ring, I've got the piston gap right here. I'm gonna spin it just a little bit so I don't want it that close to the wrist pin. The oil ring, the gap is here just off the wrist pin. The next oil ring, the gap is here. And now for the sweeper ring, we're gonna have one of them down here. And the top ring, the compression ring, the gap's gonna be up there. So then we're gonna leave them gapped like that, and we're gonna go on to the next thing.
right here. And if you look, you can see the play as he's wiggling the piston back and forth. Rings are toasted. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a crack in the compression ring. There, it's a good possibility. This is the head that we pulled off. If you guys take a look at it. You can see there's a little bit of carbon buildup, but it doesn't look terrible. So, you know, we're going to go from there. We're going to clean it up, take either an emery cloth or a wire wheel to it. And, uh, yeah. All right, so let's pull this one out. Yeah, pull this guy out. I believe this one stays in. Yep. And we've got plenty of wire here for you to fish it through. Um, you want to put some rags? Let me grab some rags to put down here. Yeah. Uh, we lost the dowel at the bottom, but I'm just going to put it back where it was. Just in case one of the rings is broken. Yep. It doesn't fall down into the engine. Of course. And then that way we won't have as bad of a day. I'll stuff this on this side. Just once you start going up on the jug, we're going to have to have to fish the chain through. But the chain shouldn't be able to slide. It goes. I'm just worried about getting shit. Ah. Uh, the rings are gone. Yeah. Yeah, looking in the cylinder, I don't see any major scoring. So like you said, maybe a dingleberry hone, but we'll keep that one as a parts cylinder. How about the piston? Do you see anything on the skirts? Oh no, the rings are there. They're just, I think they're just shot. I think that might just be done. I don't know. The piston itself is not bad either. No, I don't see no, anything on the skirt. No scoring on the piston. Sweet. So we might get, a, we could probably get away with a set of rings on this one. All right, so we wanted to look at the piston. So we cleaned it off. We cleaned off the dome and we ran this part number right here. That's you can see it's 50 over. No, nope, it's this one. It's 4312P2. Okay. And it comes up as a Wiseco 50 millimeter over piston for the 225. So this was a, uh, overboard piston and jug so we're trying to decide if we're going to put the other block or the other uh jug that we have in the other piston on this one or if we're going to order rings for this one and uh we'll get back to you guys with that in the next video thanks for watching thanks for subscribing if you guys like it hit the notification bell and uh have a good one see you later say bye bye